Keeping them honest tonight, a congressman who broke the rules, punished by fellow lawmakers today. He says it's all about politics, but a lot of his Democratic colleagues disagreed. So today, Congressman Charles Rangel had to do what fewer than two dozen of his colleagues in history have ever had to do. He stood in the well of the House and received the condemnation of his speaker and his colleagues. A man who once ran the committee that wrote the nation's tax laws censured this afternoon. The vote, bipartisan, 333 to 79, came after the House Ethics Committee found him guilty of 11 counts of violating House rules. This evening, after a brief statement on the House floor, the 80-year-old, 20-term, uh, uh, 20-year, uh, excuse me, 20-term New York congressman talked to reporters insisting he is not corrupt. I think history would show that a different standard has been used in this case where I did not curse out the speaker, I have not tried to have sex with minors, I did not steal any money, I never, I tried to help uh, City College and uh, it's been hard for me to get some of the people in the press to state that out of the 13 charges, seven of them are related to one event. As I said, two years ago, I have not and never, and there's not any evidence that I did anything to enrich myself, that I've done anything corrupt, or done anything to sell my office or to sell the Congress, anything that involved intent to deceive or to avoid my taxes or any disclosures. That was Congressman Rangel. Today, no, he did not have sex with minors, as some uh, other censured congressmen have, nor did he curse anyone out. But he was convicted of 11 counts of misconduct by a bipartisan committee. So let's just talk about the facts here. Some of the counts were related to his using his office as a powerful congressman to raise money for a school at City University of New York named in his honor. And why is that wrong? Well, the question is, is it really appropriate for a member of Congress to be suggesting or even appear to be pressuring companies or individuals to donate money to something? In one case, according to the New York Times, Mr. Rangel's committee helped preserve a tax loophole for an oil drilling company that pledged money. So even if it wasn't money he himself was after, as he says, you can make a case it was influence and self-aggrandizement. He was also censured for accepting several rent-stabilized apartments for campaign offices at prices far below market value. Apartments designed for residential, not office use. And Mr. Rangel denies any wrongdoing. But let's remember, rent-stabilized apartments in New York City are meant for people with low incomes. And if Rangel was using those apartments and got them because of who he is, then actually deserving people were not able to use them. Then there's the Dominican Republic. Here he is enjoying a moment on the beach. He's got a villa down there. The congressman failing to disclose rental income on it, as well as on mutual funds and other accounts as required by Congress. He filed amendments to his financial disclosure forms only after the Ethics Committee began investigating him. Now, the congressman has blamed sloppy bookkeeping, and that may be, but it may also be an excuse. Remember, this was the guy writing tax law, and he can't seem to keep his record straight, the kind everybody has to, whether we're in Congress or not. Joining me now, Joe Johns and Melanie Sloan. She's currently Executive Director for Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington. Earlier next year, she'll be leaving that post to go into private legal practice with Democratic strategist Lenny Davis. Uh, Melanie, is Congressman Rangel corrupt? I mean, he says he's not. He says it's not corruption because he wasn't personally benefiting financially. But is there an argument to be made? I think there is. I think if you ask most Americans, they'd think that if you're getting a bunch of apartments that other people couldn't have access to, that if you're trading on your influence in Congress in order to raise money for basically a big monument to me, people would have problems with those kind of things, as well as the tax violations, for example, failing to disclose income. Those are things that directly uh, benefited Mr. Rangel. Joe, you were at the House today. You spoke to the Congressman. What was his mood like? Well, humiliated, no. Contrite, no. Uh, apologetic, yes. Admitting that he did something wrong and needed to be punished, yes. But the uh, bottom line was he thought it was too much punishment. And, and the interesting thing was watching the dynamics down in the House. He was surrounded by people. There were only two moments I saw when it looked like he was alone and sort of soaking this in and, and realizing that uh, he was in trouble here. One was when it was clear that they weren't going to bust the charge down and make it a lesser charge. Uh, he, he was alone, looked like he had to take a bunch of deep breaths to sort of regain his composure. And the other time was when the Speaker of the House uh, read the censure resolution while he was standing in the well. Those were the two moments. Otherwise, 
uh, this was a politician who was just not going to let them see him sweat today. Melanie, I mean, he was talking about the punishments too severe, and, and part of his point was that others in the past, members of Congress, had committed similar violations and were only reprimanded. But in truth, there really was no punishment. I mean, there's, there's not any punishment. I mean, the, yes, he was sternly talked to today, I guess, but that's it. <laughs> Well, that's right. And so to a lot of people, that probably wouldn't seem like much. But this is sort of the ultimate humiliation for a member of Congress. <coughs> being censured is the most serious thing that can happen to you, short of being expelled. And they save that for members of Congress who are convicted of crimes. Let's also note that Mr. Rangel really changed his strategy. If you'll remember, for the past two years, he's been proclaiming his innocence. He didn't do anything. He was going to have his day before the Ethics Committee and tell us all how he didn't do anything wrong. Well, that didn't work out for him so well. So now he's changed his strategy. It's not that I didn't do anything wrong. It's just that I wasn't really personally corrupt. So you still shouldn't issue this harsh sanction on me. Joe, the Congressional Black Caucus was upset. Congressman Rangel was censured. Uh, they thought that went too far. Congressman Maxine Waters is also facing, facing ethics charges. Uh, how wary are congressional leaders being perceived that they're being extra tough on African-American lawmakers? Well, that is a concern that's out there simply because we have these two African-American Congress people who are both very high profile. Nonetheless, uh, there has been some concern, a greater concern perhaps, that this Democratic Congress came in talking about a culture of corruption among Republicans and uh, weren't able to discipline their own. Now, with Rangel sort of held out as an example that uh, he did something and he actually was the first member of Congress to get censured since uh, 1983. So. Uh, it'll be a little bit easier for them to make the claim that they police their own after, after these two cases. Fascinating day, Joe Johns. Thanks, Melanie Sloan, as well.